Kevin, you've got everyone on edge right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come down. I'm going to wipe out all of this. Just to show you, as long as your drawing is, is locked in place, you've really got nothing to worry about. My experience has been that the thing that trips people up the most is that they think they think differently about portraits than they do about something else, right? I find myself quoting Mike Tyson way too much. But, he, you know, he said this one time, and, uh, and, and it just, it's so appropriate. <clears throat> so he was being interviewed, and he had a big fight coming up. This is when he was in his prime. And the guy he was getting ready to fight was talking all kinds of stuff about how he, he had really sized Mike Tyson up. He understood how to, how to, how to defend against him and was going to lay him out. And in an interview, they actually asked Mike Tyson what he thought of that guy's statement. And Mike Tyson flatly said, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. Right. And so when what happens is these guy, this guy got into the ring and Mike Tyson hit him one time and changed his attitude. The guy realized that that getting hit by Mike Tyson was not so easy to avoid and that it hurt. And he knew that every time he got hit going forward, there's a good chance he was going to get knocked out. And so he started to change his game plan because the, because the challenge was much greater than he had anticipated. And when we come into a portrait, a lot of us do that. We see the portrait and it's like, uh, 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 it's like getting hit in the face. Uh, where do I start? What do I do? I started painting and it's not looking like the person I'm eight minutes in and I don't recognize the face yet. And it's like, well, what do you do? Well, maybe capturing, maybe capturing a likeness takes two hours. But if you don't know that, if you're not experienced and, and been been guided through doing something like this, well, you realize it's going to look like a train wreck for two hours as you manage the pieces and make sense of them. You get an hour and a half in, you look and you're like, I'm a disaster. I don't know how to paint. Put your painting down and walk away. And you were only 30 minutes away from pulling it together, but you didn't recognize it. You didn't know that you were that close, right? And so, <clears throat> again, going back to a very simple still life, I put a ball up on a table. Nobody feels threatened by that. It's round. I understand that. I make a round thing. There's a shadow over here. The face is the same thing. It's just a bunch of little shapes, diamonds and, and circles and, and, and ovals and, you know, so you want to break it down. You want to simplify it and make sense of it. You know, when you put a ball and a cube up on a table, it's very easy to see the ball and the cube and make sense of it. There are no, you know, no overwhelming number of details and decisions to make. So the first thing you have to do in order to be able to paint a portrait <clears throat> is have a process that equalizes complex subject matter and simple subject matter. So that a portrait and a bowl and a cube are basically the same thing. The same tools are applied. So with Evolve, you know, for anybody who's looked at some of the things that we do in Evolve, in gray, we start in grayscale and we think in terms of shadows and lights and then the edges that connect them. A bowl and a cube are comprised of shadow shades and light shades, and they have edges, either sharp or graded, that connect them. And a face is exactly the same, exactly the same. It doesn't have any extra parts if you're doing it in grayscale. Nobody's born able to do this. These skills are earned, and you earn them in small increments. You bite off more than you can chew, you're going to fail. And it's going to chip away at your confidence. Part of being able to do this is having confidence in yourself. And so when you start, start small, start simple. Build some confidence that, hey, every time I do this now, I'm able to do it, right? Again, if you're going to run, you run two miles in the first day, you're like, oh, that's terrible. By the end of two weeks, you're like, that's yeah, not so bad. Treat the art the same way. Do this simple do this simple exercise like I just described, and it's going to be a mess for the first couple of weeks. But as you're doing it, they're going to get better and better, and eventually, you'll be able to actually get a recognizable head consistently. Now, there's no details in it. But you'll be able to create a three-dimensional head in grayscale that is recognizable. And stop there and do that until you're killing it. Then go to the next step. And the next step will present itself. It'll tell you what it is. That's such a good point. We, we don't learn anything else like we think we should learn art, right? We just kind of assume that we should be able to create portraits and we just jump right in. But we don't do that with anything else. Um, and Carmen actually asks a really good question here for technically when you're doing this, 
Um, she asks, is it better to practice using the same face over and over again, or do you think it's a better idea to kind of mix things up? So it's actually a great question. If you can use the same face over,